everybody welcome back to the channel it is finally time finally time to upgrade my golf cart to lithium the lead acids in it are uh you know they're they're not the best suited for for hard working the voltage drops off quick it starts losing power so there are the duracell gc2 215 amp hour batteries six six volt batteries around 62 pounds a piece so that's a little over 360 pounds sitting there fixing to put this golf cart on a weight loss regimen in a hurry i've already got a sampling shunt and stuff in this uh golf cart here it's still a resistor cart with the v-glide no solid state controls i was going to do solid state conversion but i changed my mind i'm going to see what happens when you put lithium on older style golf carts like this of course i'll lose some some power through the resistors when it burns off depending on my throttle application but hey i'm gonna disconnect these gc2s and we'll swap it over if you have a smartphone which most of you do video your battery setup you know video how everything is connected so you have a reference point to work off of batteries are ready to come out now so i'll show you to get these out the easy way so just get you a one inch tie down strap if your batteries don't have the handles with them and then just lift them out. I said they're about 62 pounds a piece. So they're a little, a little on the heavy side, a little bit more than a, a bag of animal feed and things like that. But that one inch strap, you can strap it together. You can just grab it, whatever, and pull them out. Uh, I'm going to start with the center and then work my way to the, to the outside banks. Look at that free three inch lift kit. Look what happened getting all that weight out of there. I had picked it right up off the ground. There we go. The battery bay is empty of the lead acids. And I got them over here on my little... Uh, landscape cart but uh, let me get this cleaned up down here in the battery bay and uh and it's time to switch over to lithium okay fast forward four weeks i'm gonna have to offer my apologies you can see leaves have changed a lot has gone on in the last few weeks i had clips of the xrh new energy battery sitting on the bed going over everything um showed it trying to fit in this hole you can see it's not in the battery compartment it's actually in the bag well so I lost that footage. I accidentally deleted it, I'm taking pictures of hurricane footage and flood footage, things like that during Hurricane Helene. So I'm offering my apologies to you, the viewer, and XRH battery. So let me first explain why this battery is sitting back here in the bag well versus right here where it's supposed to go. I tried and tried and tried my best to make this battery fit in this Club Car DS. It's a resistor cart. As I mentioned, you see the resistors right there. Basically, it's a... 36 volt toaster anytime you're not at full throttle application or accelerator application heat is coming through those resistors i had the battery sitting kind of right there where the charger is the included charger by the way had it sitting right there and it was only maybe an inch from those resistors right there and those resistors will almost glow cherry red uh, makes a lot of heat right there you can feel it through your let's say through your hindquarters when you're sitting on the seat sometimes they get so hot if you're going slow and pulling up a big hill so i did not think that was a wise idea to have a lithium iron phosphate plastic cased battery within that close of a proximity to those resistors all right well you say well i could have slid it up well no i couldn't slide it up i've still got the v-glide so the v-glide kind of blocked me off so i had the battery sitting right behind the v-glide and so you can see it sits about right there right in line with those resistors so that's not going to work I tried to put it in the side uh, fender well over there. Let me show you that. So I tried to squeeze it in right here. Uh, I would have had to cut the fender out back to about right in there. So that would have let all that water, you know, and mud and stuff come in and get on the battery. So that was not going to work. Um, so I just could not find a good solution. And even with the, the battery sitting on the frame right here, uh, I even had a piece of angle channel and stuff trying to make it work. The terminals would have been in the seat. I'd have had to drill the bottom of the seat out to make clearance for the battery terminals. So if you've got a Club Car DS, uh, one like this resistor, you know, with the regular with the solenoid and the old school selector switch, you know, the old school ones, um, I couldn't make it fit. Um, you know, and the body's apparently stock on this. It's not been loaded or anything. It just the battery's just too tall and too wide to fit. And you know, the back of the battery was sitting about right here on these resistors. So uh, that gets that gets smoking hot. So uh, not going to work on this Club Car DS in the battery compartment. But regardless, um, you know, if you're going to have passengers and stuff or want to store stuff back here in the bag well, uh, not for a Club Car DS. But you can see I've been using it. 
Uh, so, you know, different review than you see on some channels. You can see it's been sitting back here uh, for a few weeks now. I had to run me some two gauge leads, use Windy Nation cable, run the leads back up to the factory connections up there. So, you know, the battery is going back to the stock connections where the lead acid's hooked up. You know, double terminals, nice heavy duty. You know, they got caps and covers that come with it. And it's got a comm cable for the display. So I drilled a hole in the side of the fender right there to hook up my communication cable to the display. And the display is great. I mean, it's, let it power up. There we go. See, we're sitting at 40 volts. I rode for about 20 minutes last night and that's a 105 amp hour battery. So you can see that right there. It's, uh, you know, it holds its charge real good. And the cycle count, of course it's showing zero because I've not pulled it down. And the way this BMS calculates, you know, you got to pull it down below about 50% to count as a cycle. And this one has not been pulled down, but to 95% or so, and then it's been recharged. Um, you can see the temperatures and stuff right here. You can disable your charging. It'll come back on right there. Disable discharging. All right, back on. So there we go. Shows you everything. Give us the cell voltages right there. Shows you everything as it's charging up. Uh, you can watch it balance. And it's an absolute beast of a battery. It's close to 70 pounds. Uh, I'll have a slide right here with the dimensions in it to show you. And I've got it sitting backwards, you know. The, the logo is on this side right here. You see the nice little logo down in there. XRH New Energy. Very, very snazzy logo. The reason I set it this direction is the weight. When you pick it up, you can feel the weight is, is cantered to this side of the battery feels like there's a little fluff or something in here. Uh, most of the weight is sitting on this side. It's very heavy, cantered to this direction. And a lot of times I'm using the golf cart by myself. So for balance, you know, if I'm sitting here, I wanted the weight sitting toward the passenger side. And when my wife rides with me, she is quite a bit lighter than me. So for balance and stuff, cause you know, we, we go up some, some extreme stuff with this golf cart. I keep it at balance. I put the weight to the passenger side. And this is the included 20 amp charger. You can see it's been here. It's dirty, it's been used. There is the Anderson 50 amp connector. Uh, pretty straightforward, just hooked your positive and negative. This is to the charger. And then the AC cord comes out here. You just drill you a two inch hole. It's got nice stainless screws. So you plug in right there and it charges. Let me demonstrate that for you. Just take your drop cord, like charging, it's like a mini Tesla or mini Nissan Leaf or what have you, and just plug your cord into the side right there. Let me line it up, doing this one-handed. All right, plug it in. You'll hear a click in a second when you do that. All right, hear the fan on the charger coming on. All right, charger's coming up. And you'll go over here and watch the current climb up on the battery. So that's a 20 amp charger and it delivers right at 20 amps until the voltage gets to 41.4, and then it'll drop back down to 10 amps to top off all the way. And it's been working flawlessly. Uh, it's been under here and been beat on, and it's got dirt on it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. And while this tops off, uh, I wanna talk about a benefit of having it way back here in the back. Uh, there's so much weight off of this golf cart now. I mean, there's almost 300 pounds that's missing. Um, the tires slide now when you put on brakes going down the hills. There's not weight. I had to lower the tire pressures way down. I was running right at 10 pounds, and I'm down to about 4 pounds in all the tires. The steering is super light now. I mean, it's like super easy to steer now. Used to, you had to kind of kind of grunt on it to make it, make it go where all that lead acid weight was sitting there. Uh, as far as climbing hills or hauling for weight, lifting the front end, no. It, it can get a little bit light, and you can probably slip a couple of a couple of playing cards under the front tire if you nail it from a dead stop it you know it'll almost wheelie with just an old series dc motor so that's pretty impressive you know of course got a little bit of a little bit of counterweight action going on but that battery will deliver its current and it is not letting up it is like a darn freight train this thing just pulls and doesn't get tired the lead acids i would get just a few trips around and they would start declining the voltage would drop and it'd struggle just be like a snail climbing hills this doesn't get tired. It's, it holds 40 volts, 39.9 volts. Most of the time I'm riding or using it, so very impressive. I missed the charger hitting 41.4. It went to 41.4 on the voltage, then it dropped back down to 10 amps of current going in the battery. And of course, when you're pushing, not pushing as hard, the voltage is down, but it'll climb on up and top off. As you can see, it's got a timer right there too, 16 minutes to full. 
And this is also a smart battery with Bluetooth. Um, they want you to download the Ziozang or little Elephant Electric app, which is JBD's uh, app. But anyhow, I know you want to see the build quality on this battery. And it's got a screw top lid right there. So uh, let me dust it off a little bit. And I'll pop it open. We'll take a look at it because I hadn't looked at it yet either. Uh, you know, I was trying to get everything in and running in case I needed this. You know, during all that nonsense with them that hurricane and stuff coming through. But I'll pop the top off. We'll take a we'll take a quick look at it. I got all the screws taken loose out of the battery, so we'll just take a take a quick look here. I'm not gonna pull the whole pack apart or nothing like that. So let me gently take it apart. Oh, check that out. Nice metal reinforcements all around the cells. Excellent. Well, there explains the the weight shift to the pasture side like i was talking about we got a little bit of open space here it was only a 12 cell battery looks like that'd be probably the same case for a 51.2 volt battery for the extra four cells right there so i didn't think i was crazy thinking the weight was heavier on this side well here is the battery with the cover lifted off let's start up here at the terminals uh, the negatives got one two three four number tens we have a number four positive lead on there silicone jacketed wires all of them the jbd bms is right there it's the contactor based one you can't really see it with the camera but it's similar to one i did on a previous battery and uh, we've got six cells down this side six cells down this side it's using printed circuit board uh, cell connectors on this one instead of regular bus bars i like those printed circuit board connectors right there we've got metal casing all around the battery uh, epoxy board everywhere it's stabilized you can see the metal casing goes all the way to the outside of the plastic. It's not going to shift. It's not going to move at all. Um, here's our jumper between each set of six cells, our series jumper. It's using a four-gauge jumper between each set of six to bring them up to 38.4 volt nominal. Um, if I'm going to knock it, I'm going to have to go ahead and knock it right here. It's all this wasted space right here. Um, if they would have selected a smaller case, so like I said, I think... This is the same case they use for the 51.2 volt batteries. If they had to chop this case, you know, had a smaller case, I could have put it in my battery compartment right there and it would save me a lot of hassle, a lot of extra costs, things like that. Then again, it's cost, it's a resistor club car. Um, if they wanted to garner more of the market for carts like mine for ease of install, shrink that case up and I think we'll be on to something. But I don't see anything, you know, out of the ordinary in here. Everything looks good. Um, you know no complaints with its performance so uh you know i can't see anything wrong with it so far it's not complained yet that's pretty cool to see that manufacturers going to printed circuit board cell connectors and this is what a printed circuit board cell connector looks like this is a different battery of course but that's what you're what you're dealing with all this is copper impregnated uh, circuit board right here and your cell connectors are just like that so that's what's in the xrh right there similar to this and everything's tight, super tight in this battery, nothing loose, and it's got double uh, double terminals right there. But now that I see exactly where the, the wires go to, I'll rearrange my terminals on top because I had the positive here. I did have the negative dead centered under here, but I'm going to switch my positive over to the outside lug. So if you get in this battery, the outside of the double lug is where the actual uh, terminals are. A direct connected a little bit less resistance going straight underneath it versus coming through the double terminal all right so i'm going to button it back up um you know not going to do a capacity test on this i don't see it being an issue capacity wise it's not disappointing me at all uh so far so uh, i'm gonna put all back together put the bed back on and then we'll go for a ride all right flat ground uh two passengers on the xrh 105 golf cart battery uh, with a 30 pound power station in the back Let's see what it'll do All right, let's try that again. A good current reading off this thing. Uh, here we go, flat ground acceleration test again. Um, three, two, one, go. Two seconds of throttle and five seconds of brake. All right, it's hill climb time. Pretty steep hill right here. So uh, get us a reading right there if you don't mind, passenger. All right, I'm gonna go kind of slow. It's just gonna pull a big, big current going up here pretty steep hill Let's see what she's got it's 150 it's 150 amps climbing that hill all right here's an even steeper hill i'm 
going slow to try to max the current out. 162 amps. So, okay, that's good. Right, this is the steep right here. We're going to slide. There we go. Slide. Slide going down it. Walk around here. Give it a hit. Ready? So much faster than it was. Let's see if it'll spin. To share my final thoughts on the XRH battery and Club Car DS for Club Car DS owners. I did not upgrade the V Glider resistors. I wanted to keep that system for a reason. It's durable, bulletproof. Of course, the resistors burn off energy. You're less efficient total runtime with resistors versus solid state controls, but that's fine with me. I wanted to keep the system simple. So, Club Car DS owners with resistor V Glide, not the battery for you. Just fine with me because mine's utility cart set up with the bed. Not a problem for me. Um, uh, far as performance, the XRH battery performs great. Uh, no problems with the BMS, no problems with capacity. And if you're talking lead acid to lithium, you know, lead acid you ride this long, lithium, it'll just, it'll outlast you. Uh, your hindquarters will be tired of sitting in the seat before that battery goes flat. What I wish XRH would do. Now, I appreciate XRH sending this battery as a test. This is a brand new battery. You know, I'm a tester for this battery right here. And I provided feedback to them, but I'm telling you as the viewer as well, the same feedback, you know, I gave XRH. Chop that case down. That case needs to be that four or five inches shorter distance. And if that case was shorter, then I could put it on that side fender well like I showed you where I wanted to put it. If they had lost that little bit of spacing on that case, it would fit right in that side. I wouldn't have to chop the fender and all this space here would be open could keep my v-glide resistors it'd be out of the way so now as far as the build the pcb uh cell connectors and everything the reinforcements all that's great appreciate you xrh for letting me test this battery out uh viewers this battery should be on the market for sale by the time you see this video so i have links in the description if you're interested in looking at it and they're also they got a 51.2 or 48 volt uh, battery out as well and they're also come out some metal case batteries so XRH has come out with all kinds of new products. So just want to let y'all know about that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Y'all have a nice day. Be safe. Any questions, put in the comments.